everyone, and welcome to another episode of Obscurus Looper Presents. And this is the start of the Cynthia Rothrock Marathon. Hell yeah! Well, some of you may be asking, who is Cynthia Rothrock? For those of you who don't know, my first two reviews were for Undefeatable and Lady Dragon, two movies she starred in in the early 90s. In the early 80s, she was the five-time undefeated world karate champion in Forms and Weapons, and she also has five black belts. So she actually knows what she's doing, despite what her movies try to make you think. She was actually pretty big. She did quite a few movies in Hong Kong, she was the inspiration for Sonya Blade in the Mortal Kombat series, and she was really cool because she kicked ass and she didn't need to take her clothes off to do it. So, even though I've made fun of her in the past, and I'm kinda riffing on her movies here, I actually really like her. And yeah, her movies are kind of bad. But they're fun, and that's why I'm reviewing four of her movies in a row, starting with Extreme Fighter. I'm starting with Extreme Fighter because out of the four Cynthia Rothrock movies I have to review at the moment, it's probably the least entertaining. It's also the last film that Cynthia Rothrock ever did, and despite having top billing, she's not in it that much. But not to worry, folks. The next three movies I'm reviewing, she actually starred in in all of their crappy glory. With a title like Extreme Fighter, you know there's thought-provoking material here. So what is it about? The original title for Extreme Fighter was Sci-Fighter, after an experimental video game that the whole movie centers around. But they changed it to Extreme Fighter because they had the mistaken belief that 2004 was 1994. Because poor literacy is cool. The back of the box would have you believe that this movie is about a deadly virus in a virtual reality game that leaves a father and son stranded inside it and fighting for their lives. And that would be correct. But what they fail to mention is that the whole thing is basically an after-school special about parents understanding their kids. And when I think of kicking ass and taking names, I think of understanding and communication. And what the hell is up with this advertising? Cynthia Rothrock, pictured on the cover, third star in credit. You know how much screen time she gets? About five minutes. You know who gets more screen time? This guy right here. And his character doesn't even have a name! Let's get to the movie. Don't let the generic rock music at the beginning fool you, this is actually a 2004 film. And look at this list of people in the movie. They actually got a lot of martial arts talent on board for this one, and this is what they come up with? A movie about a virtual reality game with subpar special effects? You had no other ideas you could pull out of your ass? Just to prove that they got real martial artists in on this, they start the film with a karate tournament. You don't have to prove that to us, movie. The iffy acting tells us exactly where their strengths lie. Our main character, Jack, played by Don the Dragon Wilson, is competing in said tournament when he finds out from his father that his son Brad didn't come. In case you forget that his son is named Brad, Jack makes a habit of calling him by name every other sentence. Brad. 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 Answer me, Brad. There's a lovely young lady I brought that I want you to meet. Uh, I think you I'm just have... not ready to meet anybody. What is this, character development? Next scene. We cut to Andrew, played by Lorenzo Lamas, as he fights off poor CGI moths and some of the thugs from Razor Sharp. Andrew loses a hostage, and it turns out he was in a simulation the whole time. Hey. Lorenzo Lamas is another semi-famous B-movie martial arts star. He has second billing on the cover of the movie, and guess what? You just watched half of his screen time. I can only assume he's a police officer in training. Well, he has a gun anyway. He's training for, I don't know, something with Jack's father alongside Cynthia Rothrock's character, Sally. I see you killed the hostage again. I just can't put my faith in this new technology. You know, I don't have a PhD in computer science like you. <laughs> really? Cynthia Rothrock has a PhD in computer science? Let's not kid ourselves here. So the game is being used for training police officers. It could save your life. Yeah, it'll protect you from all of those CGI mods you'll be encountering. Doing anything tonight? Yeah. I'm studying for my second PhD. <laughs> it's still funny. We cut to Jack's karate class for no real reason. Right? Hot! Whoa! Okay, so he stopped the class just for that? Oh, and I guess they're going home now. Good thing you flipped that guy over then. Hey, wait a second, what does that spell- uh. Hold on to your pants, people! This movie's about to get gangsta! Yeah, I wouldn't do flips that close to an open flame. By the way, the best way to show off his sweet breakdancing moves is to film the whole thing with a pole in front of him. The party is for Brad's birthday, but before we get too carried away, we need to cut to some boring stuff. Sci-Fighter. I like it. 
How'd you come up with that one? Where modern science meets the ancient art of self-defense. Yeah, this movie's full of science, all right. Hey, wait. No. No, it can't be. It is. It's a GameCube. They used a GameCube for their prop. And what is that? Tape over the front? Just how cheap are you, Extreme Fighter? Let's get back to the story. Back at the party, Brad is getting into a whole mess of trouble. Brad. Brad! Brad! Do you hear me, Brad? Brad! Brad. Brad! Your name is Brad! Answer me, Brad. You're grounded for a week. Clearly they've hit a father-son crossroads. Brad is getting into trouble and Jack just doesn't understand what it's like to be a teenager. It's a message that... Well, I'll just let this educational film explain it. I'm Batman. Meet Brad. He's our average Asian American. Look at his kooky hair. Oh, the young people. Am I right? Things aren't going well for Brad, I'm afraid. He's headed for trouble. He's having parties, kissing girls, and what's this? Breakdancing! Oh, Brad, you don't want to head down that path. And to top it all off, Brad is fighting with his father. How can we help Jack set Brad straight? Well, the answer is simple. A firm battering. I mean backhand. Yes, all that's needed is a modified GameCube and a well-meaning genius to create a deadly virtual reality game. And if there's anything most people know, it's that violence solves everything. I should know. I'm an expert. Soon, these two will be beating their way to a better understanding. I'm Batman. Growing up is a hard thing to do, son, especially when you lose your mother at such an early age. I think I'm really learning something right now. Like how boring this film is, do some fighting! Jack's father gives Brad the game for his birthday. Because hey, if a kid has problems acting out, the best thing to do is to give him a game primarily based on fighting. That's a bike helmet with some Christmas lights on it. Really? I apologize for making fun of stake CGI props. Be Brad. Who are you? Veronica. Nice graphics. <laughs> he hadn't That's seen the finished see product. You. What kind of game is this? It's a hand-to-hand -hand combat training simulator with artificial intelligence that can adapt and adjust itself to its opponent's strengths and weaknesses. Oh, is that what it is? Here I was thinking that it was a bunch of actors in front of a green screen. Jack gets in on the game, too. Well, at least we know they could afford two bike helmets with Christmas lights on them. I'm so glad you made it. You know me? Only what Dr. Tanaka told me. You? what did he tell her? You were much more handsome than I'd imagined. Ugh, this was his father that programmed the game to say that. What is this, flowers in the attic? You'd look good in a shallow monk's outfit. Orange is definitely not my color. It is kind of an uh-oh. Jack and Bride go to level one of the game. I'd say that the first guy they fight is the most annoying, but that would be feeding you sweet lies. Welcome to Side Fighter! Why'd he just throw that in there? Shouldn't that have been said at the beginning? A game's just a game, but that really hurt. Why does it hurt in real life? You realize that's not how virtual reality works, right? Jack tells his dad to fix the game before they use it again. I don't know what exactly he's doing to fix it, but whatever. Oh crap, this movie really is turning into razor sharp! Ah! Think you have enough pictures there? I get this strange feeling that the movie wants us to notice that Brad's mother is gone. This sepia tone guilt flashback is surely going to tug at the viewer's heartstrings. Bless his broken heart, that Charlie Brown. <laughs> Brad wakes up from his dream and decides to shake things off by playing some sci fighter. Where's Daddy? Who? Daddy. Diddy? Daddy. Diddy? Uh -huh. Are you sure you don't want to go get Daddy? Daddy. Daddy. Betty. Daddy. Ben. Brad gets his ass handed to him again, and the karate guy lightning bolts him into the game? Now Brad is stuck and must finish the game in order to get out. That's not how computer viruses work. They can't get into your brain, it would just make the game not function properly. It's not like it has a mind of its own. Jack goes into the game to find Brad. I don't know how finishing the game would help them since you can't defeat a virus, but hey, what do I know about science? Want no Veronica appearance this time? Aww. The rest of this movie is literally Jack and Brad just walking around from person to person and fighting them. There's no real storyline to follow in this game, so there's nothing really going on. Most of the fight scenes are pretty unmemorable, but I'll give you the highlights. Here I am. Daddy. Daddy. Why does he have such a personal grudge against them? 
There's only like two characters in the game that have any actual motivation. Where's my son? He's not on this level. So what, losing against your opponent moves you up a level now? Let's pretend, theoretically, that you want to see the most annoying character in the game. You ready? What exactly were they going for here? What is he supposed to be saying? I can't understand him. Is he supposed to be comic relief? I'm not laughing. Oh come on, Brad got beat by that guy? Just how bad of a fighter are you? There's no real transition into this. Who made the costuming decisions here? Hot Topic? Come on, guys. And why did Grandpa base the characters off of real people anyway? Wouldn't that just be confusing if those particular people were playing the game too? Just because you have wire work available doesn't mean you should use it. What is the point of this level anyway? Rothrock's game character isn't there to help anyone or move the game along, so why is she there? And for some inexplicable reason, Jack jumps in front of her to save her. She's not real! If that could kill you in real life, why the hell would you jump in front of a fictional character? Thank you, Jack. I'm the White Dragon. Dragon. In the real world, Sally shows up with some recovery discs. Professor, how did this happen? I don't know what the hell happened. This isn't how viruses work at all. Two heads are better than one. Dragon twins activate. <laughs> That's just stupid. <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> no, stop. Mm. Too much. Now Brad's in jail? When did this happen? Did we skip a scene? Oh, I can see why Chunky McSpikehead here is so prominently featured on the cover. Then he just lets him out? Why was he there in the first place? Ah! Oh no, not him again. Ah! Jack looks just as confused as we are. He doesn't even defeat him to get to the next level. It's like the game was just giving him a break because it was aware of how annoying the character is. Okay, this isn't even a movie. This is just an excuse to go from set to set and fight someone. I don't care about any of these characters. Who is this? Random homeless dude? Am I supposed to feel he's a threat or something? This is just padding. It's all just padding! Jack runs into the scene from earlier where Andrew is trying to save the hostage. Andrew isn't actually playing the game and it makes absolutely no sense, so I'm just going to assume that Don Wilson accidentally ran through the set in one take and they decided to throw it into the movie. And then we get Magical Scarf Fighting Man. This is followed by S&M Cowgirl, who I didn't realize was trying to pull off a southern accent until about halfway through the scene. Well, it's good to know he's getting over his dead wife and all. Okay, so why was he on the beach again? Jack wakes up and finds the white dragon doing some random things for no reason. Yeah, Cynthia, wire work isn't your strength. I have to catch her. Who? Oh. The white dragon. Jack, she's not me, I created her. Exactly, which makes all of these scenes entirely pointless. You shouldn't have come back here. You have to keep moving forward in the game. This is really all her character is there for, to tell him to leave her alone. Why did the game send him there just to send him back? It doesn't make sense in context. Okay, to be fair, this is really just a build up for the end when he falls for Sally. But that just makes the whole thing ring hollow because he's falling in love with a fictional character. It's not really her. She just looks like her. Now he's back on the beach. And of course there's a guy in a karate uniform there. Of course. Later on, it seems as though Brad and Jack have finally reunited. But wait! That's not Dad! That's Clone Dad! Will you wipe me, Clone Daddy? Go to hell. Well, that was resolved pretty easily. Brad! Jack's dad calls up Andrew to ask him how he beat the game before. And that's the last time we see him. Why was this character needed? Of course they don't use their swords. That would only make sense. Sometimes in life, son, the biggest obstacles are just in your mind. Oh, I get it. It's a metaphor. I'm not going to do an intro for the next scene. I'll let it speak for itself. I promise I did not edit the music here.
Well, that's as subtle as a break to the head. It's such a weenie song. Trust in me? What is this, Sesame Street? I thought I was watching a martial arts film. Anyway, they put in the recovery discs, and I guess that means more fight scenes. Yay. They beat Chunks a lot, and Brad gets out of the game, but the Black Dragon holds Jack behind. Just because. I will destroy this world. And then yours. How? Is she going to get out of the game somehow? At least make your villain's motivations make sense. Jack defeats her shortly after. I guess by destroy the world, she means be defeated very easily by one opponent. The White Dragon overcomes her programming to help Jack back into his world using her energy. Oh, come on. Why the dramatic dying scene? She's a computer character. She doesn't really die or feel pain. Why do we care? Jack wakes up and everyone is happy again. Hi. Hey, you look like that fictional character I fell in love with. That means we're meant to be. Thus we conclude with another karate competition. Break it down, Brad. Wow, that's not threatening. Still photos? High tech! This movie is just one long padding scene. There isn't much plot, and what plot there is either doesn't make sense or rings completely hollow. What were we supposed to learn from this? That violence solves all of your problems? That game cubes can take over your brain? I have to apologize, folks. There wasn't much Cynthia Rothrock here. But I promise that the next one is all Cynthia. And it's cheesy as hell. Next time, we're digging into Angel of Fury. Ever since I was a little boy, I was told to be cautious. Words like love and trust just made me nauseous. I hated them every time I regurgitated them. Debated them whenever I heard you perpetrating them. Since I was 10, I was told to get thicker skin. Now I got a bulletproof vest that I'm rolling in. There ain't no frightening them hunting, cause you just push my buttons. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. That's what you left me wanting. I'm cunning and stunning, but gunning, so just keep on running. Judgment day is here, so get your conscience clear. Nevertheless, before I throw stones, you're not alone Cause I got my own sense to get a tone I let my selfishness, rage, and bitterness take me to the abyss My heart sparked is shrouded by darkness It sounds strange, but it's time for me to change I'm sick and tired of fueling this pain You gotta trust in me I gotta trust in you It's never too late You know that trust is I'm Batman.